Good afternoon, namaskar. On behalf of the Smithsonian Center for Education and Museum Studies, I welcome each one of you for the 150th birth anniversary celebration of Nobel laureate Rabindranath Tagore, an internationally acclaimed poet, playwright, literateur, an intense painter, a unique educator, a profound philosopher, a tireless traveler, and above all, a humanist. I welcome our viewers from across the world who have joined us live. In these two days, we hope to create a veritable Tagore chain. We hope to connect in many more ways than just through technology. In the true Tagorean spirit, we hope to cross all boundaries and make connections of peace and love. We are gathered here in the National Museum of the American Indian at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, DC. The Smithsonian, as the world's largest museum complex, with 19 museums, research centers, and the National Zoo, is above all else an educational institution with a lofty mission, the increase and diffusion of knowledge. The Smithsonian's new strategic plan envisions building bridges of mutual respect and to present the diversity of world cultures and the joy of creativity with accuracy, insight, and reverence. It is precisely with this that we present our tribute to Tagore. Our program today sheds light on the cultural icon with universal appeal. Through the works of Rabindranath Tagore, we not only learn about a specific language, Bengali, and a culture, but realize that through this, through his poetry, writings, paintings, music, Tagore propagated a world culture, a human culture, and that is what makes his philosophy, his ideology, universal for all times and across all boundaries. I would like to thank the Embassy of India in Washington, D.C., and the Indian Council for Cultural Relations for their support. Special thanks to go, go to all our donors. It is your generosity that has made this program possible. Admission to all our museums and programs is free. However, we depend on the generosity of the public to make it possible for us to produce programs. We depend on the community support and this tribute is truly a combined homage to a luminary, a founding father, a leading light. We welcome our participants from across the world. They are here to share their knowledge, their expertise, and their passion. And we promise you an enriching experience for the next two days. But none of this would have been possible without the unflinching support of Anandarup and Isharai. They initiated the project and have been the strong pillars of support in every conceivable way. And it has been a pleasure for me personally to work with them for the past one year to produce this two-day symposium. Anandarup Rai worked as an economist at the World Bank but his heart has always been with his school in Shantiniketan. He is the founding president of the International Alumni for Vishwabharati, and he continues to spread the essential Tagore message with a passion and zeal. It is a very great honor for me to introduce Anandarup Rai. Thank you. Um, it has been a great privilege and a pleasure to work so closely with Manjula from the inception of the program. I think 
you will agree that she has designed a fantastic program that all will enjoy, and I do hope that there will be similar events in the future. I thank her and the Smithsonian Institution on behalf of all admirers of Tagore, and in particular, all alumni of Tagore's University at Shantiniketan. I have also really enjoyed working with our very distinguished panel of participants, especially Dr. Uma Dashgupto, who has encouraged us throughout. If I may briefly explain why Tagore has always fascinated me, obviously, as you just heard, he made great contributions to a large number of areas, such as poetry and literature, art and music and education. But he was also a hard-headed, questioning man, an argumentative man, an examining man, who never accepted any straitjackets that curbed his thinking or his creativity. This love of freedom and nonconformity is a constant motif throughout all his works. He studied both Eastern and Western thought and examined in detail the discussions on social and religious issues that took place in Bengal and India and in the West during the 19th century. He didn't much care for the grandiose secular ideas of August Koth or other European intellectuals at that time, preferring instead the simple approaches of the Baals, who were the wandering minstrels in Bengal's villages. He became an early champion of inclusive and equitable globalization at a time when religious fundamentalism, caste divisions, and militant nationalism were widespread. This is evident from his famous poem of 1901, which presented a dream for his country and indeed for any country. It is comparable in its aspirations to Jefferson's Declaration of Independence and um, Lincoln's speech at Gettysburg. Where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action, into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. In the decades that followed, there were many occasions for Tagore to clarify his concepts further. For example, he wrote in 1910, in a poem titled, The Pilgrimage to India, I'm reading just a small excerpt. Come, O Aryans, come, non-Aryans, Hindus and Muslims, Come today, O Englishmen, come, <coughs> O come, Christians. Come, O Brahmin, cleansing your mind, join hands with all. Come, O downtrodden, let the burden of every insult be forever dispelled. These ideas were reflected in a song he wrote the following year, which later became India's national anthem. In poems such as these, and also in essays and novels, Tagore anticipated Gandhi well before Gandhi's return to India in 1915. Tagore greatly influenced Gandhi, even though they had many differences of a tactical nature. Though Gandhi and also Nehru, through Gandhi and also Nehru, he influenced the Indian constitution. Despite the remarkable progress in India, Bangladesh, and elsewhere since Tagore died 70 years ago, the social and economic issues that concerned him still remain with us today. Thus, his messages are still relevant, 
and their importance has not diminished at all. I now would like to introduce Shormila Roy Pomo, who will begin the symposium with a Sanskrit sloka from the Rig Veda. Shormila Roy Pomo is a celebrated composer, artist, singer, and Tagore scholar. She grew up in Shantiniketan and studied at Tagore's university. She now is a professor of musicology in Linalco at the Sorbonne in Paris. The sloka that she has chosen to sing, um, maybe 3,000 years old, uh, means in loose translation uh, simply let us walk together, speak together, know the spirit of others. Let the <coughs> same connection inspire our union. Let all the hearts unite. Let our aspirations be the same. Let our souls unite in perfect joy. This is a lovely little sloka to begin our symposium.
And with that auspicious beginning, we move on to greetings from the Embassy of India. We are honored to have Ambassador Arun Singh with us, who brings good wishes and his thoughts on Tagore. Please welcome Ambassador Arun Singh from the Embassy of India in Washington, DC. Thank you, Manjula ji. I'm glad to be here along with all of you to participate in this uh, start of the International Conference to commemorate in Washington, D.C., the 150th birth anniversary of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate the Smithsonian Institution, the Vishwa Bharati Alumni Association of the United States for their joint initiative to host this conference. The Embassy of India and the Indian Council of Cultural Relations are proud to be associated with the event. I'm happy to see uh, all the distinguished participants and speakers who have traveled to Washington DC to participate in this conference. Their presence here today and their scholarly presentations they are going to make today and tomorrow would no doubt contribute to a better understanding of Gurudev Tagore and his message to the world. The members of the audience in such good strength on a Saturday afternoon on a Memorial Day weekend is points to the high interest here in learning more about Tagore, his life and his legacy. A number of commemorative events have been planned in India, Bangladesh and a large number of other countries, particularly in countries with which he had some association. The United States is among these countries. Today we salute and celebrate the life of a multifaceted genius who was a poet, a painter, a philosopher, but above all, a humanist who inspired and elevated his fellow men and women. The great sentinel, as Mahatma Gandhi had called him, was a moral force behind our freedom struggle and one who gave a vivid and expressive voice to the soul of India. We just heard some of the expressions uh, through the language uh, and uh, through uh, his emotions about India and how he, how he wanted India to merge. Reading Gurudev's sublime poetry or masterly prose, one cannot but note the intimacy with nature, the quest for inner truth, the sense of solidarity and community that transcends borders and breaks down presumed barriers of religion, race, or language. Yesterday at the event at the embassy, somebody drew attention to the large number of works he created and that if somebody only started copying them, uh, more than three lifetimes would be required. He wrote over 25 volumes of poetry, 15 plays, 90 short stories, 11 novels, 13 volumes of essays, and composed over 2,000 songs and created several pictures and sketches. He was also a prolific traveler. And at that time, when means of communication were not so quick, travel, traveled extensively to understand the cultures of people living in different parts of the world. This took him to more than 30 countries in five continents. He toured the United States five times between 1912 and 1930. He spent a total of 17 months in this country, the longest time he spent anywhere outside India. In fact, his connection to the United States started way back in 1906, even before he came to this country, when he sent his son to study agriculture here because he felt that modern technology in rural reconstruction would be very relevant to India's own experience. During his own visits to the US, he gave lectures at a number of places, including at the universities of Chicago, Harvard, and Rochester. The underlying message that marks Tagore's speeches during his visits was of hope for a better understanding between India and this country, which Tagore believed would eventually develop a better understanding between the East and the West. His message of human dignity, human rights, sustainable development, 
and an enabling environment are messages to which both India and the United States are committed. His ideas on universal humanism resonate well in today's world. The ideals of humanism and universalism and the constraints faced are nicely captured in these words, and I quote, the current of the world has its boundaries, otherwise it could have no existence. But its purpose is not shown in the boundaries which restrain it, but in its movement which is towards perfection. The wonder is not that there should be obstacles and sufferings in the world, but that there should be law and order, beauty and joy, goodness and love. Within the internationalism that he espoused, Tagore had a clear vision of how India should stand among the committee of peoples. He wrote, and I quote, in India what is needed more than anything else is the broad mind, which only because it is conscious of its own vigorous individuality is not afraid of accepting truth from all sources. On the 150th anniversary of his birth, our Prime Minister announced the decision of the Government of India to institute a prestigious international award in the name of Rabindranath Tagore to recognize very distinguished contribution towards the promotion of international brotherhood and fraternity. A wide range of projects are being undertaken this year to make his works more accessible to a wider audience and to preserve it for posterity. The digital collection of his paintings entitled Rabindra Chitravali was released on 7th May. Some important archival materials on Tagore that are on celluloid have been restored and packaged for national and international dissemination after subtitling in English. A unique project has been taken up by scholars of international repute of Jadapur University, which is the creation of an online electronic edition of the works of Tagore in English and Bengali. The Ministry of Culture of the Government of India has introduced a new Tagore National Fellowship for Cultural Research. The Prime Minister of India also announced that the Government of India would place additional resources with Vishwa Bharati University, including a special grant of about $20 million. The government is working with Vishwa Bharati to preserve Shanti Niketan's cultural properties. The Archaeological Survey of India is assisting in the conservation efforts and 27 heritage buildings have been restored. A new auditorium is planned and upgradation of the museums of Rabindra Bhavan and Kala Bhavan are in process. The Ministry of Culture and Vishwa Bharati have also taken up the conservation, restoration and digitization of all the priceless collections, paintings, books and manuscripts. Tagore has left for the humankind a vast treasure of his thoughts, writing, music and art. And we hope that this commemorative conference would contribute further to raising greater awareness about his life and work in the community here. Within days after Tagore's death in August 1941, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru had said, and I quote, both Gurudev and Gandhiji took much from the West and from other countries, especially Gurudev. Neither was narrowly national. Their message was to the world. It is in this spirit that I once again congratulate the Smithsonian Institution on the initiative of hosting this conference, and I wish this important event success. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Singh, and it's heartening for all of us to know what's being done in India and internationally, not only to celebrate the 150th birth anniversary, but to pass on the baton for generations to come in a true international spirit. <laughs> Ramana, 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 Ramana,